Pirate Pig's Advent Pirate Pig's tre Dora the Explorer and the Pirate Pig's Treasure. Are you serious? You stop <laughs> doing the Pokemon card pack openings to play Dora the Explorer? <laughs> no. BRT Podcast, episode 13 for March 21st. As always, I am your host, Warp Jester, and tonight we've got a couple of wonderful dandy fellows joining me tonight from a kick-ass podcast called My Rimmers. First we have up on the bottom is Zero. Hello. Hello. And right above him, we have Crimson. Hey, y'all. So these guys uh, got into the podcast thing before we did, and they do a, a really cool... It's not just gaming for you guys. It actually is kind of all types of entertainment, isn't it? Yes. Uh, tech, news, and gaming. So they, they kind of cover the gambit. So if you guys ever want to see better long format, we'll actually talk a little more about the topics uh, in a little more detail. Uh, definitely check them out. We'll talk a little more about that at the end of the podcast. But that said, uh, we're going to go ahead and, and dive right into the headlines. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So, uh, start things off here, guys. Uh, as is, I swear to God's gonna start becoming a tradition, but <laughs> nonetheless, um, more layoffs for people in the tech world. I am so I, I, I make light of this. I apologize, but it, it's it's really is becoming a common thing. I find it kind of sad. So in this case, it's the Wildstar devs reportedly laying off uh, seventy people. And looking at the details on here, what it basically boils down to is uh, NC Soft the, the um, Publishers of Wildstar, they have uh, reorganized the uh, <laughs> the group, so to speak, um, and in the process of doing their operation uh, structure or restructuring, they've laid off, like I said, approximately about seventy people, and that is about forty percent of the uh, staff of the Wildstar uh, game. Um, so that that that's a real big ding, to be quite frank. Kind of kind of sad, really. Um, the other thing they note about this too is uh, for anybody who's interested in seeing Wildstar come to China, that's not going to happen. They're basically shifting gears now. They're going to be calling Wildstar just a uh, U.S. and uh, Euro-based game. That's just going to be kind of – it's something to just kind of put it in, in, in autopilot now and leaving it be. I don't know. I mean, I, do, you, do either one of you play Wildstar? No. Oh, you follow it? I, I, I just – I tried it and I couldn't. I couldn't get into it. it. It's it's one of those things of especially for me when it comes to playing games. I really only play like one game of a genre, and for me, it's EverQuest, MMO EverQuest. I tried Wildstar. It's just it wasn't really kind of a thing, but this this just has the smell of things going sideways for Wildstar. Right. right. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's just like yeah, that. It. That's all there is to it. It's just it's gone. It's gone. I it's mean gone. It's gone. It's gone. It they, comes they down were, to that. There were definitely high hopes for Wildstar uh, when it first. There was such hype when it when it launched that uh, oh, yeah. I, I, I was hoping it would be be huge because like uh, every streamer, every YouTuber was like, "Wildstar, Wildstar, I got the beta," and I followed it a little while. And it's like to me, it's like, meh, and it seems <laughs> like everyone has turned to the meh. So. It, it, apparently, it's, it's waned rather quickly. There, there have been some perks. We have, we have a couple of people in uh, BRG that do play, and uh, um, I've seen the the creative side of it, where you can build a house and put all the stuff into it. I mean, it's it's cool, but it really kind of boiled down. When I was watching some of the gameplay video and watching my friend play. It just really boiled down to it was World of Warcraft in space, and you know, if in this day and age, if you're gonna bring out another game, you you have to do something that's gonna stand out from it. Um, I, the, the thing that really kills me about this too is that this is this was announced just days before uh, there was a, a, um, a global games marketing uh, forecast that's gonna that games are gonna basically hit uh, over a hundred billion uh, by 2019. And this this has been a trend for the last couple of times we've brought this up in the podcast is we see layoffs happen, but then we see the general trend of gaming making money hand over fist. Right. I think that's where you see it takes a lot more personnel to develop and then alpha test and debug a program, but it Certainly. doesn't take 
even close to a quarter of the number of employees to sustain it. Yeah. No, I, I can agree with you. I absolutely can agree with you. Well, I mean, there's there's that. Maybe they just need to figure out a way to become cross-platform. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of cross-platforming, uh, big news coming from Xbox Live as it says, hey, Rocket League players, we are ready to cross-platform to Windows 10. Awesome, right? Yeah, I, uh, I, I love it. Microsoft's Microsoft's head, Mr. Spector, <laughs> <clears throat> said, we're ready to do this. Um, Microsoft even sent out an invite to say, hey, PS4 players on playing Rocket League, you guys want to, you know, get some cross, cross-platform cross action going, you know? <laughs> mix, your, mix your peanut butter with our jelly. <laughs> and... <laughs> You know, we're still waiting to hear back an official response from PlayStation, but uh, currently... Oh, God, I'm so sorry. I just had the worst a... vision of that game that we'll talk about later with, like, the Sony and Microsoft logos on it. <laughs> as of right now, as of right now, Xbox Live players can play with Microsoft Windows 10 players, and Xbox Live players have still got the option to only play with other Xbox Live players. That way you're not up against somebody with a mouse and keyboard and, you know... Which is not possibly as big a deal. It's, I mean, it's really not. It, this is this is this is actually. I actually found this really interesting, and this actually leads us into, into the next uh, the story piece, uh, which is Microsoft, as Zero said, is basically putting the you know quote unquote throwing the gauntlet down, saying, "Hey, PlayStation, you know, we're open to it if you're willing," and, and it's it's almost a little bit cheeky, just because uh, PlayStation has been compatible with PC. Before Microsoft made this announcement, so it's just like, but he's just kind of going, um, yeah, you know what? Uh, screw you guys. Uh, we've been already, already doing this. So right now, to make sure everybody's clear, if you play on a PlayStation Four, you can play against people on Windows Ten, and if you're playing on an Xbox, you can play with people on Windows Ten. You just can't play with people on Xbox against people on the PlayStation. Speaking of cheeky. <laughs> Didn't mean to cut in here, but Please. you know, Rocket League was originally a PlayStation game. The, its predecessor was a PlayStation game. Mm-hmm. Supersonic Acrobatic Rocket Powered Battle Cars came huh? out for PlayStation. Yeah. Oh, that's right. It was a PlayStation game. I find it cheeky that Microsoft is like, hey, PlayStation, when are you going to get on the same level and let your players play our with our players on a game that you guys originally developed? <laughs> it it really I mean it's kind of right. things, but the the other thing I was going to say is that I'm I'm somebody that and I've talked about this in the past. We talk about cross platform play. There was I forget what game it was, but there was a first person shooter game that was cross platform between PC and Xbox, and that proved definitively once and for all that if you have yes. a mouse and keyboard, you're gonna whoop whoop anybody with a controller, hands down, bar yes. nine the cabin. This on the other hand, though. We're talking about Rocket League. For anybody who hasn't played Rocket League, it's actually preferred that you use a game controller, even if you're playing PC. And I don't think there's any advantage using a mouse and a keyboard, to be honest. There, there really isn't. If you try to use a mouse, either way, you're steering the car with, it, at least with a controller, you're steering and accelerating and braking with, you know, one thumb and two fingers. Mm-hmm. Uh, at most, you've got to jump. With a keyboard, you're... You can't drive the car with the mouse. That would be amazing if you could, but you're moving the camera with the mouse. That's all you're doing with the yeah. mouse. And you so have to actually, have that kind of control for it. You're actually cutting yourself short if you try to play with a mouse and keyboard. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that this is one of those cases where I think it, that doing the cross-platform would be amazing. And it would be, be, be landmark because this would be the first time that I could think of. And Crimson, you can – you probably know better than I do, but I think this would be the first time you'd ever see two different console manufacturers actually have a common game online. None that I know of that have uh, attempted this. So there you go. So, I don't know. I mean, it could happen. Who knows? And PlayStation's got a lot of things on their plate right now with the VR that just came out. There's also been a rumor that there's going to be a PlayStation 4.5 <laughs> coming up. Um, now this is this is straight out of the rumor mill, so uh, I will excuse the other two if they need to <laughs> on this. But seriously, uh, there's been uh, uh, current plans 
for a new version of the PlayStation 4. And this is, again, this is all rumor mill. There's no real actual release of news on it. But there's a lot of question as to um, if this is going to be an upgrade to the existing hardware, i.e. I own a PS4 and I can attach something to it. I, I almost kind of think about like Sega, and, <laughs> Sega Genesis and the... Yeah, the expansion pack <laughs> yeah. card thing? Oh, that, yeah. That kind of thing. Or if it's going to be a, a completely separate entity in itself, the, the, the claim to fame is going to be that it does 4K resolution uh, gameplay. Um, so, again, will it be something completely new? Will it be an add-on to it? Um, I, if, I were, if I were to try to surmise on this, I would say this is absolute complete and utter bunk. That's just – that's my take, to be honest with you. I don't really see them trying to make an expansion slot. Uh, I don't see them trying to do anything expected. Like, Hi, Lydia. Look, that's a weird sound sound. What's going on? Who's playing? Who's playing a video? Not me. Yeah. Oh, this is really weird. Yeah, I don't have anything planned. Oh, no. wow. Well, anyways, um, I'm going to have this wonderful audio overlay now. There's apparently some video playing that I can't see. <laughs> Content match. Oh yeah, yeah. Content ID. <laughs> I know. What, what, what are your guys' take on it? Because, like I said, I look at it from the aspect of uh, would would they would they do an upgrade to their hardware? Would they replace the PlayStation this early? I I I don't think it would be smart for them to replace the PlayStation this early. But I don't see a hardware upgrade. Going to 4K from PlayStation 4's 1080. Uh huh. Currently, that is a substantial, substantial right. CPU and GPU upgrade. Like right now, that runs an octa core 1.65 gigahertz processor. Yeah. So, I mean, 4K, you're talking three gigs, and you're talking graphical power equivalent to a GTX 970 or 980. Or an R9 AMD card. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. you're talking an achievable upgrade, but it's like a thousand dollars worth of hardware to do it. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it, it seems kind of insane. Now that said, uh, I, I don't want to get mired in this too far, but what I will say to that is there is a possibility this has some link to the fact that uh, it does take a lot more power to drive a VR system. Right. Mm -hmm. So there is that possibility. I think um, personally, I think this may be one of the things where they're like, "All right, let's like run this rumor and see how people recept it, and if it, it's highly recepted, let's go with it. If not, then let's let's not do it." I know a lot of businesses do do that secretly, push out a rumor to see like how does this actually fit with the, ah, the consumer test base? the waters, test the waters without actually right. doing anything, right. and see if they want it. And there's, I think, you know, uh, hardware console gaming is going to come to a point where you're going to have to be able to change, have interchangeable pieces. Uh, I think we're slowly getting to that point where things are moving so fast, you're going to need it. Plus, I mean, th again, we're going speculation, so I'll go one, one deeper. Th they probably know a little bit more about the NX than I do. So they may know <laughs> specs that we don't as uh, consumers. So they may be like, you know what? We got to stay up, one up on them. Gotcha. Right. I could be. I could be. I well, mean, I, we'll see. Uh, like I said, I don't want to get Mara done that. Uh, right. I, I want to actually switch gears here and talk about uh, uh, Twitch streaming and, and losing, <laughs> losing media rights. Oh, yeah. In a divorce of all things. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch! Yeah, you know, I've 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 got friends that have been divorced. I'm sure I'm sure all of us do. Right. I mean, we're all we're all getting Absolutely. to that age where we've got friends that have made mistakes. Hell, I might have made a mistake once or twice in my life. You know, might have divorced myself. Might have. <laughs> might have. Uh, Ara Gaming. You might you might have heard that name before from Twitch TV. Partnered Twitch streamer girl streamer uh, took a slight hiatus from her channel so that she could finalize her divorce from her husband and 
when her channel went live the next time after what was it eight weeks or something like that there was somebody else's face there and after 30,000 people were shocked and wondering what was going on somebody jumped into the chat claiming to be her Ara's former husband stating that she gave her channel and all of her social media accounts over to him in their divorce and he had no use for it so yeah well, yeah they I'm, I'm, is... I'm calling bs on that one well here's the thing the channel and all of the social media accounts were under an llc under their name so the business had to be oh. split the business did have to be split in the divorce because you can't okay. have okay I did not know that, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. That, 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 that plot thing. I, it, that's the first thing that popped in my head. I was like, "How does how do you lose your ch-? like? You know, God forbid, me and my wife ever got divorced. How would you lose your channel to that? But if they right. if they if they were both shared under LLC, I can understand that's, that. Yes, it was a household company. He was like the co something or other, and she was the owner of it. But because it was a joint thing, and they were getting divorced, it had to be separated. Um. Uh, I don't see why anyone that's got, you know, their sole source of income would give away a partnered Twitch channel as well as the Twitter account that goes with it. Um, but there is, you know, people have their reasons. Maybe she was looking for an out, you know, maybe yeah, she's not better. That's speculation. Nobody knows. There is other speculation that the hubby got the Twitch account and immediately sold it to someone else yeah which would be legal so far because it's not in the twitch eula it's not in their terms of service that you can't do said things it's this right. is just the first time it's happened that's really interesting i mean i i didn't dig into this any deeper than than i had to to be honest but i just, i brought it up and i find it interesting because you know brg is a lot of of youtubers and twitchers and and whatnot and I figure it was kind of up our alley in terms of just kind of seeing things that happen, but just, there's there's so much awry here. Like you said, I I can understand the the logic you have zero, and I can I can see where that could go, but just have somebody who is the face of a channel lose the right to that channel, and then to have this other mystery woman come in and buy it, right? And right. Become, it's like. It, it, uh, I, 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 what the hell? I, I couldn't see somebody buying my channel and becoming Warp Jester, you know? Right, right. Just buy all of Warp Jester's subs, all both of them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and blow my rating here and have my one, my one freebie. That's that's a middle figure for you. <laughs> to, to add insult to injury, though, the ex-husband, the, uh, uh, the claimant, the, the person who claims himself as the ex-husband, also says that his former wife has signed a non-compete agreement and will not be streaming for anyone or herself for the next five years. Again, I, I want to call BS, but still, if that's the case, what, 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 what kind of divorce lawyer do you have that would screw you that badly? Right. <laughs> I mean, I'm just thinking, you know, if your lawyer is going out to, you know, get beers with your husband after you're filing, there's a problem. <laughs> right. Like, th- this has red flags all, all over it. Down. And, right. And, and going on, like, someone, like, buying your channel afterwards, like, wh- who would want to be known as the person that bought someone else's channel? You would be extremely hated yeah right it's already a hated practice to buy followers or bot followers and subs it's it's on some whole next level (laughs) i to steal somebody's legitimate right subscribers and followers that and for eight weeks you know ara gaming had patrons subscribers on twitch even though she wasn't streaming that's an auto updated thing how long had she been gone and this other person been siphoning funds off of it? oh crap i even thought about that right. yeah I, know, I think i think this is a great example though and in the end though because i think this this shows the big difference between old and new media because in old media you think like think about the 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 the, the um the daily show 
or those kind of things where you can take out the center figure, the the, the host, and put in a new one. And, right. And people will accept that's kind of what I think. The new media environment isn't like that. Right. It's not a show. It's this person. Yeah, you are you are the entity in that sense. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's – good lord. Anyways. <laughs> that's, right. So, I, it's 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 freakish and it's all I, I God zero nine and making me go cringe in all kinds of ways. <laughs> let's let let's let's change gears here. Let's talk about people who actually are you know streaming with legitimate channels. Right. They have right. a new avenue now, don't they? Yes, yes. Google makers of Android have found the way. They have unlocked it. They have mastered <laughs> the way to stream gaming vlogs all of that good stuff right from your mobile handheld device perfect right i mean i wanted to play console games on live stream and on youtube and stuff like that uh personally i have and i'm like okay here's my phone big phone you know <laughs> it's got a usb port on the bottom of it but i've got no way to capture this uh, I would need to buy like all sorts of cabling and run it to my capture card. Not anymore. Not anymore. Uh, Super data research. They're saying streaming is a $3.8 billion industry on YouTube. Um, so Google took that number and they've made it so that with a push of a button, you can now stream your screen through Wi-Fi, through your 4G, out to an RTMP server God, and let it in just G. <laughs> <laughs> right through your 4G. And that will end up costing your channel so cost the, money. So for the low cost of 15 gigs of data a day. <laughs> <laughs> God help the poor guy that does this is like streaming a, a, a you know, clash of clans and then right. realizes that he had lost Wi-Fi connection was on his data the entire time. Now, <laughs> now mind you, do you think this might <sighs> I don't want. I don't like speculating. Is it okay if I speculate on this podcast? Absolutely, because I know I'm. <laughs> we're not we're all to about on, the vicious rumors. <laughs> I know yes. I'm not allowed to on something like <laughs> minus the rumors. Um, Android, right? Owned by Google, right? Push of a button, stream to YouTube, right? Uh huh. YouTube, owned by Google. Uh huh. Who owns Android? Uh huh. You think this is just another way for uh, Google to make money? Ah, uh, but because. While streaming to Twitch and Camcord, and because you can already stream to Meerkat and Periscope and stuff from your cell phone, things like Camcord, which is a new video streaming service, and Twitch are going to take extra software to work, mm -hmm. even though it's the exact same process. Now, that, that there is a thing to that, though. You're absolutely right. You, you, can, you can stream instantly, and to be, again, very clear, you can stream instantly to YouTube streaming. YouTube does have a streaming ability. And mm -hmm. you can't stream directly to it. That said, you can also upload video to YouTube or any other site you want to. You can actually record and upload that video to an alternative video hosting site. So, uh, yeah, I at least give them that. Yeah, yeah, I give them that. But <laughs> instant live screen captured video game play right to YouTube. Speculation. I just don't see mobile streaming taking off, really. I do. Minecraft you know, I Pocket didn't Edition. think a lot of things in mobile were going to take off, Crimson, but I'm an old curmudgeon. I remember <laughs> I the mean, days of the dumb phones, so. <laughs> I got three I, I, words for you. Minecraft Pocket Edition. Yeah, but I can watch PC and I Nintendo. Know. I know. Minecraft's been done. I, I'm not even interested in the Xbox versions of Minecraft there that are uploaded to YouTube. It's like, wow, well, I can watch Minecraft that's like, you know, three patches behind. Way. <laughs> Flappy Bird. I don't know, but I could, what I could see. What I <laughs> might to watch that? <laughs> what I might invest in, because like now, now you've got me interested. I might, what if I streamed Pokemon Go? <gasps> yes. The best part of that, <sighs> the best part of that is this bad boy right here, the Spark, works with phones yes oh, good yes. better than a yeti yes augmented all right reality i will i will give you games. that one augmented Fine. reality but but i'll tell you what since, since we mentioned 
Nintendo type stuff, and we're talking about rumors. Crimson, uh, there's a rumor. I get to talk now. There's a rumor. It's it, it's right. got your name written all over it. Yes. All right. <laughs> so Nintendo, um, some patent hints, at, um, gesture at um. You'll be able to do motion control uh, for the next handheld console uh, and gestures and motion controls like all this. And there is like, maybe this is for the NX. <laughs> this is pretty stupid. All right. So a patent filing by the gaming giant uh, for motion and gesture technology has sparked uh, all this speculation uh, about the new interface, which we still know nothing about. Um, it was unearthed by NeoGaf, NeoGaf, whatever you want to call it, uh, user disorientator. Uh, <laughs> there's documents <laughs> that describe a touch-based single-screen portable device with a key infrared uh, component, uh, system outline features with an infrared camera, and all all this fun stuff that would you know track all the stuff like a net, like a connect. Um, but as the the rumor mill is, although the patent describes the handheld device, the technology could potentially, you know, find its way to the NX, given mm -hmm. the rumor included a portable component. So what do you think about this? I think it's ridiculous. I think any more hand gestures and I'm going to get seasick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, the, 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 there's an updated, there's actually updated one that, uh, 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 news bite that just came out before I could get a chance to put it in here. And they're talking about an actual like egg shaped uh, controller that was effectively like a full screen, you know, digital screen with controllers in the middle of it. Now, what and... I go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to repeat what he just said in a <laughs> quizzical <laughs> with a quizzical sound to it. I mean, like it. I don't I, I, I... Wait, I, I know, for anybody who doesn't know, Crimson is, is just a, 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 a kind of sort of, what's the word, fanatic? Yes, <laughs> he's a Nintendo. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, uh, I've seen the patents for the other controller where it's like an oval shape and it has an L LCD or an LED, whatever, screen on the controller that has your, your actual controls on it, which I think is absolutely fantastic like game breaking that you'd have a screen on the controller as well like just that that just sounds well, so cool it's so different now, wait that a minute. Take, the wii U has a screen on the controller that's a tablet the, <laughs> the wii that's U, a tablet the wii u has thumbsticks next to its gigantic screen right <laughs> what they have is like it, it's pretty nice it, it's innovative that's what they're known for is innovation now that is true this this is like connect, but worse. Yeah, it why? sounds terrible. Now wait a minute, I like the connect, but you, worse. You don't understand warped handheld device, hand gesture recognition. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Put it so, in your hand and shake it around. You're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna point at it. Okay, this so, is yeah. not this is not touchscreen capability. This is like the ability to motion around with it no that, that that is true and that that's something that was actually pretty interesting aside from the the controller being egg-shaped and kind of weird in that sense that that is true this this reminds me of uh god the the name escapes right now but a little black um little black rectangle that you put in front of your keyboard and it was able to deter uh to see your hand in space and i can't for the life of me remember the damn name of it now but it's the same kind of concept from what i'm understanding i just I don't know. I it, it's 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 a controller you pick up. It's got joysticks on it. It rumored to even have like a touch screen, and then on top of all of that, it can see your hands above the controller. What, what purpose the? for a handheld console do you need to have <laughs> hand gestures for? A handheld console. Oh, I can tell you right now. A tiny screen you're going to be looking at when you're playing that that next version of Mario that's pissing you off no end. You can give it a gesture. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you will actually know it. Like, I can't do it in games. All... I'll blow a rating, but you know the gesture. You get your hands all in between the screen. and I'm just trying to imagine like this, this, this horrible, horrible rendition of Simon Says where you're using the joy pads, touching the screen, wave your hands above it. Right. You get your hands in between you and your viewing surface. <laughs> it's game over, man. It's going to be a great experience. It's definitely going to be uh... – 
Mm. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I, 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 I tell you what, that, I don't know. I I would say it's one of those I'd have to try it before I, I buy it kind of a thing. So that's just me. And speaking of which, uh, if you want to try before you buy, and you happen to be in Europe, sorry, guys in the U.S., you're, you're already <laughs> ass out on this one. PC World Curious Housing uh, HTC Vive demo. So if you want to demo the Vive, you can actually go out to these uh, these locations that have a Vive room set up. You can actually use a Vive, get a feel for it, and see if it's really something you want to have. Which, for the price tag of the goddamn thing, I'm glad. Cause, yeah, the Vive is, what, $800? I, 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 well, it, yes, you need a second controller, first controller, I don't know. It, it doesn't mention the fact that the people, the thing that people keep not mentioning is on top of everything else, you're going to need other hardware and other stuff for the virtual world. Inevitably, everybody's going to have one of those stupid collars you put around your waist with the slippery, uh, the slippery base so you can walk in place. Oh, come on. You haven't uh, seen that, Crimson? Oh, yeah, the little, yes. the little, the little treadmill thing that, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you're going to walk around a real trip over your coffee table and kill yourself. There's going to be just horror stories of, of like, Vibes going through people's faces. <laughs> Are we sure it's not Vive? <laughs> it's, I'm pretty sure it's not Vive. I will say this though: that the the vibe is a loose a little more upfront about this. We talked about this in pre-show, but um, the vibe is is most expensive on the market, mm-hmm. but it comes with everything, right. including the controllers and things wireless. I believe this is wireless, right? It's also so far the only one that's currently available. On the market, granted, yes. So I mean, th- there's at least that. So if if you happen to be in uh, in Bristol, uh, Tottenham, uh, I don't know, I would say half these damn things. Anyway, if you're in those areas, <laughs> you can go down to the store and check it out uh, to get a feel for it. Just make sure you wipe off the vibe before the next guy. You know, icky, icky, yeah. Anyways, hey Crimson, yo, tell me, tell me something good. Tell me something wonderful. Well, I have nothing good to tell you. Uh, mods, mods and Steam no. always so, a good thing. So, all right, so Valve is no hand gestures. Valve is bringing back <laughs> paid mods. Yay! <laughs> Yay! That went over so well last so well time. Skyrim, right? Right, right. When everybody stopped playing it, is that what we're talking about? Because right. paid mods, mm-hmm. and nobody, nobody played to play. Yeah. People were pretty pissed about it last time around. Yeah. Right. So this time, you're going to be able to do it with Dota 2. <gasps> do people still play that game? I, 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 I don't know. I don't play the game personally, but everybody always, whenever they describe a new game, they always define it as, you know, it's like Dota. I, I'm not smiling and go, okay. Right. Do so, people still play Dota 2? Hmm. Well, all right. So Valve has tried this before with Skyrim mod, uh, with a Steam workshop, and let's just say it didn't go well. But this time, this time they swear things are different. So uh, it's it going to be like a boyfriend trying to get you back. I swear to God, it'll be different. <laughs> Basically, so the feature is coming to Dota Two, as previously uh, mentioned. Um, it, it's like the aim, I guess, is the support and reward. The game developers, um, the uh, it was announced that the new uh, custom game pass, uh, one time fee of one dollar for 30 days, uh, that will open premium access to user made mods, modes, 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 uh, mods, mods, nah, whatever. So, uh, g- again, <laughs> it's it's paid mods done I, i'll give them credit it's done differently and there's a lot of i actually read like three different articles to try to wrap my head around this and, and try to extrapolate what exactly was happening and you know people can can bomb me in the comments if, they, if, if i'm if i got this wrong and i apologize but basically it's you're playing a, th- a flat fee to get access to player made mods and that's that's usually what ends up ruffling people's feathers um, but and, and there's also some other features you get. So there'd be a certain game like you know more storage or things like that. But it, it's they're trying to do it right as near as I can tell in terms of it's a flat fee. You can download it for mods. It 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 they have a, a 
like 48 hour you know, quote unquote return policy. Yes. Um, so they're, they're trying, they really are genuinely trying to make it right. They're saying that they are going to cherry pick, like selectively cherry pick who will actually be included in that access. So it's not just going to be like, I can go out tomorrow and, and make a mod that is completely under crap. Right. They, and they sell keep, it to you. They keep putting the emphasis on developers. Yeah. They're, they're really trying to make things. And this is kind of a big deal because the last time I tried to do this, it was straight up, you're paying for the mod. And, 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 and the questions come up like, if I've got a really cool mod that works really well and I buy another mod and it breaks that first mod, who's supposed to fix it? How did I get my money back? What right. the hell do you do? This kind of eliminates that. And I just said, this is a this is a, a, a monthly charge that does not reoccur. So this will encourage modders to keep on top of things not just try you know get a one-time payment and run with it so right and what's better this time is uh developers are getting a larger slice of the pie much so larger. yeah they're getting 70 percent compared to 25 percent with uh with skyrim so that's that's a pretty big jump and it's probably a good jump see good things mm. do happen from bad things sometimes if they had to have the skyrim debacle modders wouldn't be getting 70 percent they might right. get like 30 <laughs> right well with a 70 percent cut you're inclined to put out a better product that way more people are going to be like this mod is really good i wonder what other mods this person has if you can you know search exactly. by the modder it can actually kind of you know kind of sort of sample them so to speak so right mm -hmm. for that in any case um so that's that's kind of a cool thing um you know actually would think it'd be kind of cool the way dota plays what if you could play dota on your table on your table? Yes. That would be awesome. Well, you could do it with Sony, right? Oh, this is where I do the story. <laughs> <laughs> we are on top of thinking... segways tonight. I was thinking <laughs> about playing Dota on my table. <laughs> Leave me alone. No, Sony. Uh, they're... <laughs> Sony's doing stuff. <laughs> and things. Aren't they? Tables. Things. <laughs> Sony's a future lab. Is the actual name of their R and D R and D division, Future Lab. Um, Very creative. Similar to like Google X division. Uh, <laughs> demonstrated at South by Southwest a table that was holographic and manipulative uh, projector technology, basically. Uh, <laughs> they introduced a projector onto a table that could track user movements, um, could play video, could scan and dimension things placed on the tabletop surface. I, I can it's, just hear the enthusiasm pouring out of zero right now. I completely derailed myself at the start of this topic. I, I'm honestly curious about this just because they didn't give us a lot of information. I didn't have time to really research this particular article. I had to go on what, what came out of digital spy. And to be quite honest, you guys can see the whole article right here. It ain't much. They really right. don't give you much details. There's reports from the verge. Which again, I didn't have time to research. I'm just really curious because from the announcement, from some of the people, things that people were saying, it's like, Oh my God, this is amazing. It's interactive. It's like, this sounds a whole lot like Microsoft surface table from yes. years ago. Right. Yes. Which was a really cool, really amazing concept. And I really wanted to see it happen. And it never flippin' happened. All that does, all it is, is it's simple light refraction. Like, you know, chroma key on your computer. Yeah, well, For instance, knows, knows colors. Mm -hmm. um, and it can predict, it can predict the changes in colors. Like if it knows it's looking at one solid object, that's why it's a tabletop. I bet you if you broadcast this onto, let's say, a multicolored wall or a painting, it would not work. Yeah. Because it reads the percentage of color change. That's why it can map things out. It also can read distance via laser, green laser, you know, on infrared laser. How long it takes for light to bounce back, giving you a dimension. That's why I can follow fingers and stuff like that. It knows where the sure. end is. I just wonder how different the tech is on this versus like the Microsoft table. Which again, guys, you can look it up and, and read all about it. Now, one thing I will notice is you can see from the picture, you can see that the, the projection is from the top down. So you can see the projections on the person's hand. Microsoft's table was from the bottom up. 
And what it relied on was everything was contained within the table under the table. Now, the limitation right. was it couldn't see anything until it was right on top of the surface. Once you press your hand onto the surface, it could easily see it and, and track it. But just the concept, what they put out back in the day was things like, you know, throw your phone on the table and watch all the pictures you took that day spill out onto the table. Right. Have it, right. you know, be able to share with people, things like that. I'd be curious to see what this thing can do. They make a note in here about the um, the ability for it to bring books to life. So you can open up uh, uh, the example they gave was Alice in Wonderland and actually see things happen. It's a great way to right. get kids involved in that sense. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a little tech tidbit. I thought it was kind of interesting. We'll see where it goes. The it possibilities are the possibilities are pretty much endless anymore with you know NFC, um, near field contact. Yep as well as RFID, if it's in range, uh, QR codes. Yep. If you use an ultraviolet QR code or an infrared QR code, you could have something that's a solid object that the projector could see that There's you so can't much see. potential. Exactly. Stop farking around with your stupid VR and make this happen. No. Right. <laughs> right. Just throw VR in the trash can. It was a good idea, great concept. Um, nobody's going to buy it. <laughs> you you, uh, you heard it here first, folks. Give us VR's some dead. augmented reality and then let's skip right ahead to 2055 in the next six months, please. Exactly. I'm down. I'm also down for new movies. What do you think, Crimson? New movies? Uh, no. No? No, no. No new movies? <laughs> All right. Correct. So this isn't quite, you know, half like three being confirmed, but... So, J.J. <laughs> Abrams has said that uh, the Half-Life movie and the Portal movie are definitely going to be happening. So, right now, they've got writers for the scripts. They're working on the scripts right now. They don't have actors, but they're definitely moving forward. Both movies are moving forward. Uh, I'm excited. I think it's going to be pretty cool. I think Half-Life will definitely be more easy to transcribe to the big screen than portal will be i could agree due, with you on that one due to the storyline but th it's pretty exciting that we're going to get two more video game movies that um and definitely if abrams is behind it i mean my god yeah well so the storylines can be fine i see portal being very comical if you guys right. haven't seen or played either one of these games um i'll, I'll give a shout out to a uh, big damn artist he did uh uh, a couple of different portals, as well as the Half Life games. They're fun. They're fun storylines. Half Life, even for as old as the game was, you know, quote unquote old, uh, I couldn't play it in the dark. It would scare the living bejesus out of me. Uh, <laughs> uh, that said, the one fatal flaw I think to these movies becoming a reality, and it, and it's it's not the fact that they're games and game movies usually end up sucking. It's the fact that it's J.J. Abrams. I think that's the fatal flaw right there. He's gonna go too dramatic with it. He can't act his way out of a paper bag. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm saying it right now. I do not like his directing. I do not yeah. like his directing. If if you want to hire him on as a consultant for like fight scenes or race scenes or big blown scenes, that's fine. For the rest of the movie, get a director who actually knows how to make a movie. Well, my only the only excitement reason I would have Abrams on board is it's a someone that's known that can pull in money can pull in resources that a lot of video game movies tend to lack is someone that can yeah someone who can not only get the money but get the actors get resources get props where you know video game movies kind of fell on that now is that his directing yeah but it, you got to go with the good and the bad well if you're going to be somebody with the title of director you might want to actually have a skill in that <laughs> I like Star Wars. You know, I, I no, I mean, it, it's Star Wars. I have to love it for being Star Wars. But honestly, I, I, I'd rather run around with a digital penis and and trust in somebody else's digital penis. To be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> We're at that point of the point of the cast, aren't we? Oh, yes, we are. Where I have to talk about this damn game. <laughs> Channel of jousting. Where the PG rating goes it's, up. Yeah, you know. here, here goes your PG. Keep it PG, PG thirteen rating. Yeah, <laughs> probably so. <laughs> Penetration. Penetration. 
Get ready to hear it a lot, guys, because there is a new game coming next month. <laughs> it is called Genital Jousting. Once again, releases April 2016, and it is not very safe for work and i'm going to imagine <laughs> Kids even don't... though it looks like it might be for all ages because it's got you know pretty colors, colors and stuff like that the object of the game is to take a digital penis and put it in a digital butthole <laughs> of the other penis of the other penis <laughs> it's a little penis and then and chase balls down another digital butthole <laughs> and put it in there and by the way this is a multiplayer game for up to eight players um it was created at a game jam in Berlin last year. Um, it, yeah, once again, it gets a full release next month. You got to see, see the stamp Unfortunately, the, the, the YouTube video that was on, uh, in this article uh, it, it went private, so I can't... <laughs> went private. <laughs> that was unintentional. Look it up on YouTube if you're over the age of 18. It's kind of disturbing and funny at the same time. Yeah, with noise. Make sure you turn the volume on, yeah. too. <laughs> uh, the sound effects are oh, a thing of beauty. It's like um, slamming your fist into an open jar of mayonnaise. <laughs> all right, guys. With with all honesty, like if I was at a convention, this game looks fun to play with other people. It is but, a multiplayer game for yes. up to eight people. So what In you're saying, game... Crimson, you'd love to play with... Uh, Play with the Crimson or play with uh, Zero. <laughs> oh penis. my god. And from the creators of the game, they're saying it's not so much competitive as it is pleasurable. <laughs> <laughs> it's a feel-good game. Oh god! <laughs> this brings a whole new meaning to the whole dick butt. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it would be remiss if I didn't point out this game's coming out at a time when a lot of games are starting to already convert mm -hmm. over to VR. The best part, the best part of this game, before you can actually play a match, you, 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 you have to consent. Start, you have to consent. Yes, press up to consent, to give consent. It's consensual. Oh, God, my head hurts. Okay, we're moving on. Um, as always, guys, this always tends to run long. I apologize. <laughs> I'm just going to get out of this. Um, a quick quick history lesson for you guys. Um. March 14th is uh, Bell Labs announces the uh, uh, the giant brain. This was the, the first fully transistored computer. Uh, it was a landmark event when this happened. This is 1955. This was the, one of the evolution. We talked about uh, ENIAC being one of the first uh, all-electric, non-mechanical computers uh, that came into existence. So this is kind of the next iteration. It's a little factoid for you. So there you go. Um, there's a whole bunch of... Oh, there's the video. I thought I had pulled it up for you. That's the video of all the little game of the little wieners running around. And st <laughs> I got the tabs in the wrong order. I found it. <laughs> it. I see. It is as bad as we told you. That's total nightmare fuel. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and move on now. Is it There's bad no enough I've got a broken you. tailbone while we're doing this? <laughs> hey, look, birthdays. Okay, guys, birthdays, BRG birthdays for the months of March from between for this week, 14th through the 20th. Obviously, today is March 19th. Um, Degeki's birthday coming up March 22nd. <clears throat> happy, happy early birthday, Degeki. Happy birthday. And today, today, March as 19th. As we record this. As we record, we have the birthday of the one and only Warped. Mother effing Jester. Happy birthday, Ward. That is a lie. I've never effed my mother. <laughs> Unless we're playing that game, then I don't know if that counts. Happy birthday. Thank it's you. Your birthday. Happy that's birthday. not a lie. <laughs> it's another day, man. But thank you nonetheless. Yeah, so that's birthdays for you. Uh, God, that, that thing's going to just haunt me for the rest of my life. <laughs> um, Whole bunch of cons and things going on. There's the uh, Sakura Con up in uh, Washington, which is a big gaming con. It's actually one of the really well-known gaming cons. In addition to WonderCon, which is down in Los Angeles. Again, another very well-known uh, uh, Comic-Con. I would bet you dollars of donuts that uh, there's a good chance my friend, uh, which is probably down one of those, he does uh, uh, Blue Baby Productions for um, con art and, and uh, photo profiles like, and everything. Your friend's a con artist? Yes. 
Yes, he is. <laughs> You'd like him. I'll get him on sometime. You guys can say hi to him. It's great. Uh, <laughs> also, for game releases, there's a huge list of game releases. Again, all this is in the notes, so please make sure you head over to the forums and Barrock Gaming uh, to get this. Uh, the one I will make a note about is actually not a game release so much as a uh, DLC for Fallout 4. This is a very long-awaited and highly touted uh, uh, add-on for the Fallout 4 franchise. Um, it looks like a crap ton of fun. I'm waiting to see a bunch of YouTubers start up their uh, Fallout 4s again with this context. I guarantee you it's probably going to happen. Um, so we're going to take a quick break here. <clears throat> uh, I want to talk about, uh, well, about Ruark. Ruark88. He's one of our BRGers. He's a good guy. We had him on uh, the podcast a few few episodes ago. Talked about tech and whatnot. He has had a gaming channel for quite a while, and he has just hit four hundred. I Congrats, just happened are. to know, just happened to look up and realize he has got four hundred subs. So, congratulations to Ruark on that. Uh, yeah. He does a lot of content. Um, it, I try to keep up with all the BRGers uh, uh, and what they do. I can't keep up with everybody. I couldn't even keep up with him. No person could sit there and actually watch all this content, I don't think. <laughs> he blows out so much crap, so, so much stuff. It's ridiculous. So keep up with him is a challenge. But he does do a, a, a wide variety of different games all the time. Um, kids, he is so not PC. It's not even flipping funny. He's about as inappropriate as a bunch of penises running around trying to stick themselves in each other's butts. Just for the record. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to go ahead and dive into our main segment. Uh, we're actually going to do some extended headlines here. Um, since we just had GDC, which is a game developers conference, a lot of news comes out of GDC. It's a, it's a big hype festival for what's coming up in the game world. So we might kind of want to run down uh, run down those things and kind of give you some, some quick quips as to what's going on. We'll try not to drive too long on this since we are going to be running long as it is um but i do want to start off right at the top here with with panicky robots and and gorgeous visual effects um this is actually in relation to uh the unreal engine um they have some absolutely gorgeous and i mean gorgeous video um of the of the of the engines in, in action and uh what's really neat is they they show some great video footage here in terms of what the Unreal Engine can do. This particular one I'm playing is uh, the uh, GDC demo called Adam Part 1, and it's just amazing. You have to remember, this is this is all being done in an engine that's built for games. This is not made by Pixar. This is not made by DreamWorks. This is something that is free and accessible to you and I, and this is the kind of content that comes out of it. So I'm amazed. And it goes even further, doesn't it, Zero? Yes. Um, <clears throat> Senua has, or Senua's sacri Sacrifice, um, the new Hellblade game, uh, was shown at GDC. Some of it, you know, there were, the, the gameplay looks beautiful, the graphics are amazing, and it's extremely realistic in facial features and recognitions, or facial features. Um, anyway, the, during, during this teaser, during this teaser uh, video, the screen split, and people were wondering what was going on with the facial features that the model character in the game was displaying. When the screen moved over to the side, you got to see the actual model backstage who had a scanner looking at her face and was copying her facial expressions. To a T. To a T. Eyeball movement, cheekbone movement, dimples, all of it. Um, it's, it's just showing how well motion capture is coming along. You're getting to the point where things are... About to get real, real, real fast. No kidding. And I'm, I'm showing the video as you're talking about, it, and it's just, it is off the hook because, again, this is this is where things get really interesting. This is this if this is an engine made for gaming, and now they're using uh, this to do cinematics 
with all kinds of massive detail. I mean, they're taking detailed images of the actress's face to get all the wrinkles and every little detail of her, of her face and then marked up and, and tracked to do this tracking with. And it's just, it's, it's gorgeous. It's incredible. Right. Mm-hmm. And the the fight thing too is unreal. Isn't, isn't the only uh, engine out there and the- doing this type of, of like character tracking, motion tracking. This is not even the, the full extent of it. it. This actually, they actually go on, uh, at the event to show off um, a whole bunch of um, uh, extra f- clips and features and whatnot, even uh, 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 I can't remember the name of the company now. <laughs> Car company, McLaren. Uh, uh, McLaren, yeah. McLaren is actually designing cars in the Unreal Engine. <laughs> this is this is insane. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, we're we're talking about literally having uh, uh, a, a tool for gaming that's free to everybody that can do so much depth and detail. It's 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 nutso. I mean, I don't I don't know where to begin anymore. I'm 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 I'm, I'm speechless. Well, um, yeah. Cars used to be designed with Unity scale form, which is an Autodesk product, but you know. Well, Unity was not not uh, to be missed at this demo either. Unity had a lot of uh, a lot of stuff out there. Um, mm-hmm. They're showing off. So I mean, this is this is one of those things of you know you've got the the two, the two big players being Unity and uh, Unreal. You had Crytek, which yes, right now we... is contracted to uh, Amazon for Lumberyard. Yeah. So I mean, and, and, and again, these are all hey, you want to use us? Go ahead, right? So I, I know I'm I'm kind of tripped out now. Um, the other thing they have they're talking about is uh, Xbox tournament platform for developers. This is kind of interesting. This is kind of goes beyond just game development, but also the ability for them to do a lot more. It seems like I, I I'm I haven't read this in its, its entirety, but help me out here, Zero. I mean, have you have you looked at this in any detail? Uh, not in great detail, but yes, I have. Basically, it's it's uh, if you want to be a developer, you can set up tournaments and things like that as well. Um, you know, or existing games, you can set up tournaments and ladders and brackets in, and um, it all works through Xbox Live for a legitimate esports tournament. That's that's what I took away from it. Uh, yeah, I that's... would still. Have- so this is this is a continuation of the whole topic of esports becoming kind of a real deal in terms of it's you know it, it's it has a following. There are people who watch and follow esports tournaments and thing. I've actually come across people now actually in the real world who have actually talked about esports tournaments. So and it's just, mm-hmm. this is a continuation of it, which I find kind of amazing. Um, but I mean, see where things go. And again, I have to, have to kind of cross the wall, cross the streams again here. We talk about you know the rise of esports, and this comes right on the cusp of VR, right? And you know these two are going to come together, and especially with uh, Oculus Rift having how many different games on release there, uh, Grimson? So Oculus Rift on their launch is going to have thirty games, which mm-hmm. is which is a lot, a lot more than I thought, right? Yeah, yeah. They have. 30 games just completely ready. Um, different price ranges from 10 to 60 from you don't know these game titles to pretty large game titles like uh, Elite Dangerous Deluxe Edition. So there you go. A lot of them out right. there. Now some of these, when you look at the, the, the big picture of these, there are a, a, a scant handful of games in this list that are games built for a VR environment and then right. some of them are kind of conversions I guess you could call them right from being you know in front of you on the screen versus you kind of being quote unquote in them so I'd be curious to see how that plays out in terms of how people feel about those games is, is there a difference will you will you know or care that this was a game built around VR versus adapted for VR right I think I think there will be a, a noticeable difference I think um for sure. I don't think VR is going to go far enough 
it launched because it's been hyped for so long right. until we get esports tournaments of people playing VR games, watching them in like a arena football type setting mm-hmm. while they're legitimately running around in real life wearing Oculuses or v- Vives. <laughs> I almost said Vives. <laughs> On their faces, bashing into each other accidentally. That would be great. That would be great. Well, the, the other thing that would be interesting, too, though, is, is I look at it from the aspect of when you start talking about esports and, and VR, and this this could be probably a whole other topic for an actual topic piece, but not so much the, the, the esports people in the VR environment so much as the audience. Being right. able to be in the VR environment, think, think about how personal it gets when you go from watching a game from the sidelines, right up front row, you know, the court, so to speak, as opposed to seeing it through the actual gamer's eyes. There could be a whole lot, whole new vantage point, a whole new world right there. But I digress. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to bring up was uh, Twitch's helping developers create game designs for stream. This, <sighs> every time I see something like this come up, it tweaks me. It tweaks me kind of funny, but I have to remember: Twitch is owned by Amazon, Amazon. <laughs> and Amazon has Lumberyard. This is going to tie into this very quickly, but basically, they're they're helping uh, uh, Twitch players develop or uh, developers build games with Twitch kind of natively wrapped in, in and built into them. And I find this really interesting because some of the examples they gave is it's not just the idea of, oh, hey, we have a game that you can click you know a button like in Minecraft and automatically be streaming. We're talking about actual game interaction. So I, as a streamer, can start to stream up with a game and have the people following in the chat actually take part in the game, take control of something of that game. Um, this could be very interesting. I mean, talking about, you know, we, we were actually talking earlier about... Uh, the, the kind of oddity of that that uh, Twitch account being sold off because it really is the community is built around the person. This mm-hmm. is going to make it even more connected. You're not going to just go right. watch some main mainstream person. You're going to play with them. Right. So this is going to get this is this is going to just even more intrinsically intrinsically tie people to the people they follow. Good lord! You thought people were like sports fanatics as it is. Oh this god! Going to go off the freaking yeah. deep end. Yeah. Because you're actually helping play the sport, or uh, helping uh, sabotage. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, there you go. <laughs> you know, because that would never happen, Crimson. No, of course, no. no, no. <laughs> people on the internet are kind and honest people, <laughs> except Zero. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. That guy. I wouldn't trust him any further. I could throw him. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> how many? How many monitors are you up to? Warped. Eight. 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 Only eight. Only eight. No, I, I, I've, I've, I've topped out. If I want any more, I got to put another video card in. You, you got to put another video card in if you want to go more. Yeah, and I don't have anything that matches the ones I have currently. Oh, I hate that too. I just, I just upgraded my video cards too. I put in dual 980 Ti's because I couldn't find another 780 Ti to run SLI with. Yeah. So now I've got a 780 Ti that I can't do anything with because it doesn't match my 980 Ti's. Um, Luckily. if only there was. If only there was a way. If only. <laughs> if only. Thank God for Stardock. Stardock allows you to mix and match graphics cards. Not just of the same make. Like, you know, you can put NVIDIA cards together. You can put AMD cards together. They clock to the slowest of the cards. But it'll still add the RAM together. Yep. Um, and nobody wants to do that. Nobody in real life wants to take, like, Oh, my 960 isn't quite beefy enough, so I'm going to put this 660 next to it and run a 960 at a 660's clock rate, which is like 600 meg. Nobody wants to do that. <laughs> um, Stardock allows you to mix and match graphics cards without really losing any performance. And when I say mix and match, I mean you could put whatever cards you have together. Yep. It's beautiful. It makes, my, it makes my little brain pop when I see AMD next to an nvidia it really does especially if you do like a lot of uh, not just gaming work like you know amd and nvidia both have their have their things i'm gonna try to keep it in topic but not go too far off kilter um (laughs) opencl is very different from cuda cores um they both have their purposes 
AMD is a faster card, no matter how you slice it and dice it. NVIDIA is a more powerful card, no matter how you slice and dice it. There you go. Um, AMDs are your coin miners and things like that stuff you need for very fast processes. NVIDIA's got the ass to move a mountain. Um, See, I wonder I wonder how far this will go, honestly. And this 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 really catches me off guard for two reasons. One, like I said, being able to mix and match anything. And I'm wondering, like from what you're talking about, if you could somehow be selective in which cards use what, so you can actually use the cards to their gains. And right, I, right. I, I come from an era where for a long time there was a pitch battle as to what cards you bought based on what games you bought, because some games were better tailored. Right. Well, one nice card video card, but can it run Crisis 2 on Mac settings? <laughs> no, but it can run CSGO at 160 FPS. <laughs> but the other side to this, and, and, and forgive me for being a little bit cynical here, it's Stardock. I mean, these, mm-hmm. if, if, if you ever heard that name, they're the people that do like Rocket Dock and Windows Blinds and cute little widgety programs that sit on your computer and, and do cute little things. This seems like a big departure. Right. Yeah. I mean, I maybe I need to go check them out again. Maybe I'm missing something, but of all the people in the world to, to, to do this. And the other thing I got to wonder is, how does NVIDIA and, and AMD feel about this? I don't know. Do you know what I'm excited to see? Hmm. I'm excited to – I use 3D Mark a lot. You know, Fire Strike and things like that. I just scored just under 20,000 with my – current overclock as well as my new graphics cards all right zip it back up <laughs> <laughs> what's your first your score warp? <laughs> anyway i can't wait to see um physics scores as well as frame rates and fire strike scores and just 3d mark scores in general with mix and matched cards like mm-hmm. like i said the cards both have their own power they're, they're heavy power. Like AMD will outperform. It can perform more calculations than an NVIDIA, any single one of them. But an NVIDIA card can process frame rate faster. So this will be really interesting. I, I it mean, will be amazing to see what like a 980 and a R9 290 can do together. Right. Or yeah, a Fury X. At the, at the very least, until this comes out, or if you don't want to deal with this at all, you just go and get a more powerful single card, right? Yeah, yeah, but they only last so long, and without the Star Dock, you got to match. You've got to match. So if you're gonna go buy one really expensive brand new card, you might as well just get two. But I could do that with one card now with AMD. Oh yeah, you could, couldn't you? <laughs> AMD just announced that they have the most powerful graphics card in the world, and they do. Um, the only problem is, just as Warped was just saying, you can just get two cards, right? In one. <laughs> and this card is the most fastest and most powerful in the world because it takes, quite literally, two Fury X GPUs and puts them into the same housing. Yep. Um, and ties them together in Crossfire inside the same housing. So it's one card. From two cards in one PCI slot. Uh, Sports a $1,500 price tag and can process 16 teraflops. Big word. Funny word. (laughs) Teraflop. (laughs) Teraflop. (laughs) One teraflop is like 10,000 jiggly bits. (laughs) Oh, God. Now back to that bad image of that game. (laughs) (laughs) See, now forever I'm going to see jiggly bits as a little (laughs) ball in the (laughs) butthole. I got you good. But um, on the bright side, with this new super powerful single card made by MD, you'll be able to run VR. Yes. And Crisis 2 on Max. <laughs> 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 Which is a good thing because AMD uh, apparently uh, decides that they're going to uh, have powered spatially aware of VR and AR headset revealed. Mm-hmm. Wait. What? Oh, I have this article too. Dang it. I was so not prepared for this. <laughs> yes, AMD bringing out their own spatially aware. In other words, it knows where your hands are. 
uh, virtual reality headset. It knows how far your head is from things. It's spatially aware. It knows that you're about to run into a wall. It's another uh, goddamn headset. It's called the Sulan Q. Is it seriously called that? Yes, Sulan. S-U-L-O-N-Q. Look it up. Um, <clears throat> it's all-in-one, tether-free. In other words, there is no harness that you have to jack into your USB port. S -s -s Suck it, Oculus. <laughs> Shot fired. Wear it, play it, go for it. Headset, ear set, all in one. Um, it's trying to be like the HoloLens, except for instead of augmented reality, it is virtual reality. With cameras. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. That's how they're doing? Mm -hmm. that, that's another thing. That's another thing that kind of makes me wonder is the whole aspect about is is I, I love the idea of AR. I think AR is great, but I wonder if, if if Microsoft's on the right track with a visor over your face with a projection onto it, or if going this route is the right way where you have well, cameras that can feed you a modified video. That's what this does. Is exactly it feeds you a modified video, so you're technically fully blind, but you're looking through cameras, camera projections instead of with your eyeballs. You're not looking through. It just it, it reminds a me piece of, of plastic or glass. Yeah, it reminds me of of, of Ghost in the Shell. The people that have those modified like things on their face, all the little cameras hanging off of them. Mm hmm. Anyways, I, 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 I think I'm in just digital overload now. At this point, <laughs> it, it really it, am. It uses an R7 graphics card, a uh, AM FX 8800P processor. It's a very fast processor. So I'm going to imagine this thing's not going to have jack for battery life. But uh, yeah. Hey, this is actually one situation where AMD can actually take advantage of their tech when it comes to APUs. Mm -hmm. Finally, <laughs> mm -hmm. and it's able to support DirectX 12 and Vulkan in the beautiful 1440p Ooh. and Crisis 2 on Mac settings. <laughs> no. Are you again? <laughs> all right, I, 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 I've had all I can handle. <laughs> and again, guys, I know this is totally running long again i apologize I, i'll tell you right now if, if i ever have these guys back on just assume it's gonna be an extra long episode because it's just it's it's it's, it's what's gonna happen it's just gonna be that way <laughs> anyways right. as always guys if you have any questions quandaries curiosities comments feedback uh if you want to show us pictures of of your butts i don't know um feel free to to comment down below or of course go over to the bar rocket gaming forums and uh check us out there uh guys Thank you so much for, for joining me. I, I I've been I've been like really wanting to hook up with you guys for a while and do this. Um, there's 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 you guys. So make sure everybody understands here. These guys are part of Bob Rocket Gaming. They are entities in of themselves. Crimson, you you yourself, you've got a YouTube channel. Yes. Tell us tell me tell me about what's on there and what's coming up for you. Uh, right now I've got, uh, right now I'm doing a stream freak. I'm streaming every single day, seeing how long I can keep that up. I've got Minecraft, uh, Albert Nato, Binding of Isaac, Terraria, all that fun stuff. Uh, going to go to Minecon. That's, you know, enough for me. I would, I, I, I where's Minecon at this time? Uh, LA. Oh, it's actually close by. Right. Damn. I wish I had tickets. Oh, well. <sighs> and Zero. Yeah, you do you 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 do the the interweb stuff too, don't you? I, yeah, I do actually. Now that I think about it, <laughs> <laughs> there's this great grand world called the internet, and I faces on it. <laughs> mm -hmm. My face is all over the internet. I'm all over the internet, just like peanut butter's all over my bread. Um, oh, thank God you said bread. <laughs> 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 oh, geez, old Pete. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, uh, I have a YouTube channel. I'm Zero Plays Games pretty much everywhere on the internet. In fact, all you got to do is really just Google Z3 R0 Plays Games with or without spaces. It's up to you. You'll get my YouTube channel. You'll get my Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. He um, is everywhere. Just started a Let's Play of Saints Row 2. 
uh, it's a very grindy game and I'm full-time college student, full-time work right now. Semester's got a couple of weeks left, so I don't know. I'm going to try to get back into the regularly uploading Minecraft and I'm trying to stick with linear first person RPGs outside yeah. of Minecraft. So real life yeah. sucks sometimes. Real yeah. life does suck. Um, <laughs> Saints Row 2 is coming up. Minecraft coming up. Um, once still a member of a YouTube SMP for Minecraft. Uh, we're having some lag issues. No big deal. We'll get it fixed. Um, I'm going to be doing Bioshock 2 pretty soon. Once everybody, once everybody else is done playing it. Because <laughs> I, I don't want to step on anybody's toes and just like railroad them. Yeah. Uh, Welcome to the wonderful world. Yep. I'm also on Twitch and looking to get back into that so that I can raise money for my $5,500 extra life goal this year. Wow. Mm, I fat fingered, put too many zeros in. <laughs> you meant five, right? $550 <laughs> became 5500 Yep. <laughs> Can't change it's, a good, it it's a good stretch goal, but guys, definitely go check him out and, and see if you can pitch a few dollars this way to help out towards his rather lofty goal. You should, you, you should, you should do a 48-hour no-sleep live stream of you playing that, that penetration game. <sighs> <laughs> Put the volume mm -hmm. max. I don't think anybody wants to see me gen genitally jousting, even my ex. <laughs> <laughs> no in, in addition to you guys being all up on having your own channels you also together pack in even more time with minus the rumors yeah tell me yes. about that so minus the rumors is a news group that me and zero uh co-own uh we talk about gaming tech and entertainment news um Thursday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Twitch. Um, we're Mind Streamers literally everywhere. Um, and we also have a gaming stream Monday nights at 8, same same place. Uh, and then we're going to, uh, in the next week or two weeks, we're going to add a plethora of series, hopefully. Uh, we also have two other people that are in this right now, uh, Bob and Hippie. But, uh, yeah, that's what we are. Azira, you have anything you'd like to add, please? Um, your news matters. <laughs> your news matters, and basically that's what we give you. We give you the stuff that fits, you know, the typical. If you think really hard, I'm a person that likes movies, that likes gadgets and stuff and things without having the all the complex science behind it. And I like video games. Imagine watching your news without watching the news that you normally watch without skipping through, um, skipping through the war stories and the heartfelts and stuff like that. We don't do that. We, we, we cut it right to what matters to the typical. I like Doritos. I like Mountain Dew. I'm going to play video games. I want to go see a movie. And you right. don't speculate. Mm -hmm. Ain't no, and we do not here. speculate. We do not cover anything rumor based ever. <laughs> and definitely, guys, uh, head over here. Check out Minus the Rumors. Again, uh, they do not just games, but as I said, uh, all sorts of media, entertainment, tech, and so on. They do long format. They spend a lot of time actually talking more in depth about the different topics. So where we kind of breeze across them, they'll actually take some time to give you a little more detail in depth. So they're really a great way to pick up the extra, extra details that we don't necessarily cover. So definitely, definitely hang over there. Check him out, have some fun with them, and and Crimson has said he's got uh, more stuff coming down the pipe, and I'm looking forward to that. So we'll see where that goes. So head on over there. Of course, I myself, <laughs> I have my gaming channel, which still hasn't done a damn thing in quite a few weeks. I think I think actually I finally lost a sub. I apologize to whoever it was and subscribed. <laughs> I'll resubscribe when you upload. <laughs> I mean, it was so bad he la he lost half his subscribers with that one. Well, I bought yeah, this lost, channel lost, from somebody else, and all the all the subscribers all, started leaving. You lost half your subscribers when I unsubscribed, Warped. Again, just imagine the middle finger. <laughs> I'm going to forego it this time for the rating aspect, but imagine the middle finger, please. <laughs> and, of course, uh, most importantly, guys, um, again – 
all of us are part of, of Ball Rocket Gaming, and you can see this is what spawns of it. We bring people together. We have a good time. We try to create and promote uh, uh, collaboration and whatnot. As a matter of fact, there is actually new uh, new plans afoot for more stuff for Ball Rocket Gaming. We are starting up a, a, a free, free Play Friday kind of thing where we're going to start selecting... Um, individual free-to-play games that we'll be doing monthly or weekly uh, get-togethers to play together. And I'm thinking about actually starting up a roundtable around that. There are other ideas in the works as well, but I'll get those down the road. And who knows, I actually might even have some time to edit some of the video I have and put more stuff on my gaming channel. <laughs> I, I, I can theorize and, and dream. Uh, <laughs> of course, you can catch all of our content over at the Ball Rocket Gaming YouTube channel. Please feel free to stop down and check things out. You have the wonderful podcast we do here as well as the weekly roundup for all the different BRGers who want to keep on top of uh, Crimson playing Isaac and, and Zero playing with himself and, and anything else. Uh, this is definitely the place to go. <laughs> I'm just going to watch the subscriber count start dropping off Ball Rocket now. <laughs> and Nobody as, else as... will play with me. i got to play with myself. See, there's so many good taglines for that game. Like, hey, guys, collaborative game tonight. We're going to play general jousting come play with me <laughs> if you don't play with me i'm just gonna play with myself some of those were long enough you could do that <laughs> anyway <laughs> i know this has gone so horribly off the rails and i do apologize but as, as i said we, we we tend to try to bring people together to do collaboration to promote them and again it's not just youtubers and twitchers we have people who do wonderful artwork music, you name it, chances are we probably have it there, including map makers and so on. So if you guys have the ability to, we always certainly do welcome uh, Patreon donations to help keep us uh, lights on it and things going. Uh, all the extra funding we get from these type of donations are used for surplus expenditures beyond the basics. The the people like myself, uh, the board members, if you will, cover the basic cost for servers and whatnot, basically the the, the the day of the day stuff. But all the surplus we get, we use for doing special events, buying games for the BRGers, etc. So, again, please check them out. Uh, and if you can, throw us a few dollars and we will love you to death. Uh, guys, thank you so much. Again, it, it's absolute freaking pleasure, and I would love to uh, join you again uh, here or there, so to speak, when it comes to uh, doing some news together. Beautiful. Well, Just news. No genital jousting. <laughs> I'm just gonna, when we play together, I'm just going to stream that game being played while we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I think we've ruined this enough tonight. I think you guys so have too. a wonderful night. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.